Good day. So today I'm going to show you how to find the equations of the cubic graph. There are two ways to find the equations of the cubic graph. The first situation is where you are given all unknowns. If you are given all unknowns, you'll use the x-intercept form. The second way is where you are given two unknowns. So if you are given two unknowns, you'll have to find the derivative. So in this particular video, I'm going to deal with the first part. Then the next part, I'm going to put it in the link of the description below. You'll also find it at the end of this YouTube video. So be sure to know both ways. The first way is where you use the x intercept form, where you've got all of them being unknown. The second way is if you've got two unknowns, you have to use the first derivative to find it. All right, here is the situation. So in this particular equation, we are given x intercepts and an extra point whenever you are given x intercepts and an extra point you use the x intercept form of the cubic graph so when you're just given x intercepts use the x intercept form of the cubic graph what is the x intercept form of the cubic graph so we're going to have y is equals to a into x minus x1 into x minus x2 into x minus x3 Some students prefer writing R1, R2, R3, so it's still the same. Even if you write R1, R2, R3, it's still the same. Same equation, just in different notations. So, in place of x1, x2, and x3, you're going to substitute your x-intercepts. So, when you substitute minus 2 here, because there is another minus, it's obviously going to become a plus. So, therefore, we're going to have y is equals to a into x plus 2 into x we substitute another one so it's gonna be a minus two and then we substitute the third one therefore it's gonna be x minus three so here you substitute you strictly substitute your x intercept so strictly the x intercept in place of x1 x2 x3 after you're done substituting the x intercept in place of y and x you have to substitute your extra point just before i continue if you want to be treated whether it is online or physically whether it is the situation you are struggling in math or whether it is the situation where you are good in math but want perfection, take a screenshot or save these details. Whether you are studying Cambridge, which is the UK curriculum, or whether you are studying NSC, which is the South African curriculum, or IEP, or native courses which start from N1 to N6, or any curriculum you are doing no matter which country you are at, we offer tutorials. We've got lessons and practice sessions five days a week, we also give you tests once a week so that we can check your improvements. So, by the way, this x is the same as this x, which is the same as this x. They're not different. Hence, they're not called x1, x2, and x3. So, in place of x everywhere here, we'll just put 4. So, the y value is minus 12. Then we're going to have minus 12 is equals to a into. So, our x value is 4. So, it's going to be 4 plus 2 into 4 minus 2 into 4 minus 3 and then from there this is going to become minus 12 so our first goal is to find a so we first substitute our x intercepts and then we substitute our extra point then we are finding a first once we find a we're going to find b c and d so let's find a so in this case it's going to be a so 4 plus 2 is 6 and then 4 minus 2 is 2, 4 minus 3 is 1. So when you multiply this, it's going to be 12a. So we're going to have minus 12 is equals cos 6 times 2 is 12 times 1 is 12. So times a is 12a. So then when we divide both sides, we're going to end up having a is equals to minus 1. So we found our a. How do we find our b and c? Well, that's not going to be a problem. For us to find our b and c, we have to go back to this step. We have to make sure that the only thing that is not known is x and y. So we're going to go to the step where the only thing that is not known is x and y. All right. So now since we found our a, we have to go back to this step for us to find our b and c. So... We have to go back to this step because our goal is that only x and y must not be known. So if we go back to this step and we substitute a, only x and y will not be known. So let's go back to that step. So we're going to have minus 1, x plus 2, x minus 2, x minus 3. Yes, that's what we're going to have. So only x and y is not known. So after we found our a, the first goal is you have to substitute your x-intercepts. And then after that, you substitute your extra point. After you substitute your extra point, you store for a. 
then once you find a you have to go back to the second step where you have substituted your x intercept so that only y and x should not be known so in this case only y and x is not known then from here just by multiplying this stuff we're gonna end up having our b c and our b so let's do that so let's just multiply it my advice is whenever you've got three brackets it's best it's usually best to multiply the last two brackets so let's multiply this okay so here i'm gonna go straight to the point this is gonna be x squared minus 2 minus 3 is minus 5 minus 5x then 2 times 3 is 6 so it's gonna be positive 6 i went straight to the point but you can take the long cut and have four terms first Yes, but this is going to be the final result when you multiply these two. You can try it out. When you multiply these two brackets, you're going to have this as the result. And then from there, now I'm going to multiply with the first bracket. All right, I rewrote what was left at the last step. Okay, so then this, when we multiply it, we have to now multiply with the first bracket. So we're going to multiply. So this is going to be one big bracket. We're going to multiply by minus one later. So this is going to be x times x squared, which is x cubed. Then x times 5x, negative 5x. It's going to be negative 5x squared. x times 6 is going to be 6x. And then now we're going to have, we're going to start with 2. So 2 times x squared is 2x squared. And then 2 times negative 5, which is negative 10, negative 10x. Then 2 times 6, which is 12. And then from here, we just have to group like terms. So let's just group like terms. We have x cubed. So we're going to deal with this one. So minus 5 plus 2 is minus 3. So minus 3x squared. So this and this add up. And then this one and this one will add up. So 6 minus 10 is minus 4. So minus 4x. And then we're going to have plus 12. Then from there we have to distribute that. So then this is going to be minus x cubed. So it's going to be minus x cubed plus 3x squared plus 4x cause just uh, just by distributing it the signs are gonna change minus 12 so when you're multiplying by negative we just know the signs are gonna be opposite of what was there before and then there we have it so this is the answer we've got a or a we've got b c and d so the question can come out in different forms so the question can come out as find the values of a b c and d that can be the question or the question can come out in this form. They can say, show that the equation can be written in the form of this. So when they give you this, it doesn't mean you have to substitute the point and prove that that's your answer. It means you have to solve it, find it by using the whole process as I did here. And then your answer has to end up being the same. Or they can say, show that A is equals to negative one, B is equals to three, C is equals to four, and D is equals to minus 12. The question can come out in this form if they say show that these are the values you have to solve like well, what i did here and then when you are done you can now tell them a is equal to negative one b is equal to three c is equal to four and d is equal to negative 12. so these are the different forms in which the question comes out they can say show that the equation can be written in this form or they can just say find the equation of the graph or they can say find the values of a b and c and d so those are the different forms. All, all of them is just the same question. All right, here is another situation. In this case, we have got two x-intercepts instead of three x-intercepts. So the question says show that a is equal to 2, b is equal to minus 4, c is equal to minus 8, and d is equal to 16. So we're given two x-intercepts. So the moment we're given x-intercept, we know is the x-intercept form that we have to use. So the first one will be y is equal to a into x minus x1 into x minus x2. But now the problem with this is that we cannot make it two brackets simply because there are two x-intercepts. Because if we do that, this is going to end up being a parabola instead of a cubic graph. So it still has to be three brackets even though we're given two x-intercepts. But what do we do in this situation? Whenever we're given two x-intercepts, the x-intercept that is also the turning point is gonna double up. So for instance, let's just say we have another situation. Let's just say we have got something like this. Let's just say this is at minus one and this is at five. The x-intercept that is also the turning point is this one in this case. So this one is gonna double up. So the x-intercept that is also the turning point is where it's gonna double up uh yeah so 
this x intercept is also a turning point so it's going to double up so in this case we're going to say y is equals to a into x so now this was minus so it's going to become plus here because of the sign and then this is going to be so this is going to be x minus 2 and then we'll write it again x minus 2 so the x intercept that is also the turning point always doubles up this is very important it's a very important knowledge in the cubic graph all right so after we're done substituting the x-intercept, we now have to substitute our extra point. So our extra point we're given here is 1 is to 6. So therefore, our y value is 6. And remember, in place of all this x, we just substitute 1 because all these x are the same. So therefore, we're going to say it's going to be 1 plus 2, 1 minus 2, and 1 minus 2 again. So therefore, we're going to have 6 is equal to a. Then we're going to have 1 plus 2, which is 3. 1 minus 2 is minus 1. 1 minus 2 is minus 1. Minus 1 times minus 1 is positive 1 times 3 is just 3 times a. We're going to have 3a. So therefore, when I want to make a the subject of formula, I'll get a is equal to 2. So we found our a. So once we find our a, we have to go back to the second step so that only x and y should not be known. So our a is 2, so therefore I'm just going to erase this stuff and then I'm going to put 2 over there. So our a is 2. So whenever I've got 3 brackets, the advice is to multiply the last 2. In this case, when I multiply these 2, it's going to be easier if you know the shortcut. But let me use the long cut for the sake of understanding. Alright, so then we're going to have x plus 2. Then I'm going to multiply these two brackets. There's a shortcut for this. If you want to know the shortcut for this, I'm going to put it in the link of the description below. So then this is going to be minus 4x plus 4. So that is what we have. And then from there, so we have this. So from there, um, this is the answer. So now we're going to have to multiply this. So it's going to be one big bracket. So we're going to have one big bracket. So this is going to be x cubed minus 4x squared plus 4x plus 2x squared because I'm multiplying the two now then it's gonna be minus 8x then it's gonna be plus 8 so that is what we have so far and then we're gonna group like terms we can even distribute the two first but it's best to group like terms so let's just group like terms so 4x squared and minus 4x squared and 2x squared are like terms so minus 4 plus 2 is minus 2 so we're gonna have minus 2x squared and then 4x and 8x are also like terms so minus uh, 4 minus 8 is minus 4 so we're gonna have minus 4x and then these terms alone so the number does not have like terms so then we're gonna distribute that so when we distribute that we're gonna have 2x squared minus 4x okay this was x cubed rather that's just a mistake there and then this is gonna be x squared and then it's gonna be 8x then there's gonna be 16 therefore we have proven what they asked so now we can give them the answer we can now say therefore our a is equals to 2 and our b is equals to minus 4 and our c is equals to minus 8 and and our d is equals to 16 so that is how we answer these questions all right here is another example so in this case we are given the x intercept but we are not given an extra point usually they give you the extra point so that you can find a but if they do not give you the extra point they will give you the value of a so whenever they give you x-intercepts, always remember, use the x-intercept form of the cubic graph to find the equation. So in this case, they didn't give you the extra point because they gave you a. So what you do is you use the same uh, equation. So x minus x1, x minus x2, and x minus x3. So in this case, we have our a, so we do not have to find a. We usually need the extra point so that we can find a, so that we can substitute everything and find a. But when we have no extra point, we are usually given a. When we are given a, we do not need the extra point. So therefore, we're going to say y is equals to minus, minus 1, but there's no need to write minus 1. You can just write it as minus. And then when I say x, then since this is minus, it's going to become a plus when it enters there. And then we're going to have minus 2 because of that um, then when we substitute it's going to become minus 3 so then we just have to multiply all this then we'll have the rest of the values so in this case even the max will be fewer in the first case it usually counts 
four four marks usually four four to five marks so then this is gonna be minus one then we're gonna have x plus two and then when we multiply that we are gonna end up having five x and we're gonna have six and then now we're gonna multiply it's gonna become one big bracket so it's gonna be x cubed minus five x squared plus six x and then when you multiply the two now it's gonna be that we're gonna have 10 x and we're gonna have 12. all right then from there we have to group like terms so let's group like terms so 5x squared and 2x squared is gonna be minus 3x squared yep and then 6 and minus 10 is gonna be minus 4x and then plus 12. so there is a possibility that i might have made a mistake but all that matters is the understanding so here i'm just rushing all right so then this is gonna be minus x cubed then there's gonna be 3x squared and 4x and minus 12 and there we have it we've got the values of b c and d as well so there we have it so if you enjoyed this video please subscribe to my channel and i've put the links to the other video uh, the other videos uh, that might interest you.